Hey there, I am going to show you how to prep your embroidery hoop with your fabric um, and just a couple of things that you can do before you get started with your hand stitching to ensure that you can easily finish off your hoop at the end nice and neat. Um, so I like to use two pieces of fabric. I use a nice cone of cotton on top and then just a, a less expensive unbleached muslin for the back. Uh, I use two pieces of fabric because I like to zigzag all over the place with my stitching and I don't want to be able to see it through the front side. So um, that's just my personal preference. Uh, I don't know many people who do that, um, but that's just me. I don't like to stop and start my stitches. I like to jump all over the place. So I'm going to give it a nice press. Again, I know that when you put the fabric in the hoop, it's going to pull it tight, but I like to do this bit of prep, prep work. I like nice crisp fabric. I give it a nice steam. Okay. Look at that crease in the middle, so. Okay. So this square of fabric is cut to a nine inch square. It's for a hoop that it's called a seven inch hoop. However, when I measure it, it's 6.75 inches. Um, I give myself about, I used to just get, you know, measure with two fingers. I'm doing something a little more accurate. Um, and it's about an inch and a half larger when we trace the circle. Let's find the little template here. Okay. So I marked, I labeled it for myself that it's a seven inch hoop, even though it's really 6.75. Uh, my circle template measures across at eight and a half inches and that's going to give us enough fabric for the end when we finish it off. So I'm going to trace this on, we're going to cut on the line, you're not going to see it anyway, but I have these um, friction pens and they are erasable. So if you use an iron or hair dryer, the marks will disappear. Be forewarned though, this um, these pens do leave a little bit of residue, so if you're working on a black fabric and you iron off the markings, there's sometimes a little bit of residue there. Um, so, you know, be careful to have your pattern set just the way you want it before you trace it onto your fabric. Um, carefully, I've got this little helper over here. Um, my kitten, Maria, has no sense of personal space or anything. Should have bought stock in those lint rollers because I'm constantly using them to clean up after her. Okay, so there we go. We've got our circle on the fabric. Because I'm using two layers, I'm going to pin it in place so it doesn't slide when I'm cutting it. I'm not really going to bore you with cutting it all the way around, but I'm just going to go, I just go nice and slow, trim right on the line, okay, just go all the way around, okay. Now once that's done, you're going to have your circles, and if you see a little bit of black on that line, I'll show you how it just disappears with the iron, it's just, it's gone. So it's a handy little, handy little gadget for, for embroidery and tracing your designs. So there's our fabric. Now I would, um, if I'm not doing strictly freehand work, I would take this over to a window or my light tablet and trace on the pattern. Um, you can always make sure it's centered, maybe mark here and there, and then tape it to the back so it doesn't move. So trace on your pattern. If you have one, and then let's get ourselves hooped up. I just want to check and make sure you're centered. And I like to open these hoops as wide as they'll go. Oops, didn't mean to take the screw off though, the nut. So that way it just slides nicely right over the fabric. Okay, and then we're going to tighten it down. This one you have to hold. As you saw the net go flying off, it's not fixed to the hoop. So we're going to tighten that down and then go around your fabric in the hoop and pull it nice and tight. Okay, 
it's, you're going to want to see these little wiggles here. You don't want that. You want to have it nice and tight like a drum. Okay. Alright, so there you go. There's your hoop, nice and tight. And you're going to stitch, do all of your work on it, and then clean up any stitches on the back. And then to finish your hoop, I don't normally use black floss, but I'm using it so that you can see the running stitch. And I do right close to the edge, about a quarter of an inch to eighth of an inch. And you are gonna go all the way around the hoop. I usually start at the center bottom and then finish at the center bottom. Okay, so you see that that's all you're going to do all the way around the entire perimeter of the hoop. Okay. And of course I did this one already. It's a uh, white on off white, but I think you can see it. So that goes all the way around. And then what you're going to do is just gently pull in like that. And it cinches it nicely on the back and then give that a double knot. I'm not knotting this one because well, I haven't stitched it yet and I don't want it. Not finished yet so there you go that's it